my, my god dog. Come up here, buddy. Say hello to him. Can you say hello to him? This is Adonis, you all. Say hello to him. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi, Adonis. Say hi. Puppy. Come on. Put, put, put. Come on. Come on. Get on camera. There you go. Here he is. Look at the camera, man. Look. 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 Say hello. Say hello to G. Diddy. This is this is my god dog. This is my god dog. Down here. <laughs> say hello. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out. Get out. <laughs> All right. Hey, that's it. So you've heard it. Hey, peeps. This is Richardson reaching out to you. I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed to our channel. It has been a blessing to see you here. And we pray that we are adding value to you on your journey. Stay in touch with what's going on. My wife and I both have YouTube channels and she has some powerful music over on her channel. Go and visit her, Lily Richardson, uh, on YouTube. And then um, this is our channel that we do together, Crying in the Wilderness through our ministry. And so I want those of you who are uh, connected with us and subscribe uh, to our channel to share our channel with others. Uh, we are trying to obviously get our subscribers up, and if you would be so kind to share it with others, that would certainly help. And then also what I want to do is just give you a, a special gift, a special gift, and it's a, it's an e-book. It's just something very uh, precious to me, something that has helped me, and it's just making it available uh, to our audience. And it's about how to stream on or for live stream or using uh, the Internet in order to get your business out. It's a free tool, it's down in the bottom of the description here where you can get it. Uh, and I, I believe it will be a blessing to you. I've been uh, in radio and television broadcast for a long time, actually. A lot longer than what I thought, actually over 40 years. And so um, I've learned a lot through trial and error, I would say, and um, got some things right now that I believe I can, I'm at a place right now where I can share it with others that they can learn from my trials and my errors. And so I have a webinar that I'm going to be doing December 16th, 17th, and 18th. Find out more about that at my website, lesliedrichardson.com. Pretty powerful. But uh, we are in the information era. We are here. We're not coming. It's not AI is coming. No, we are here. And what those of you who are, um, uh, I would say, aggressive at this point, and willing to step out and just make it do what it do, um, you're gonna win. Those of you who are a little timid, a little shy, and say, well, I don't know if I can get in the water, I don't know if it's just the right temperature or whatever, uh, be careful with that attitude, I'll put it that way. Be really, really careful with that attitude. Um, I believe that those who fail to make the pivot to the right side of change, pivot to the right side of change is what I always talk about, um, when you pivot to the right side of change, you'll find yourself in a stronger position. You'll be actually fighting with the wind to your back. Anybody knows anything about fighting, it's always an advantage when the wind or the sun is at your back because it gives you an advantage. I believe when we um, uh, use every tool that's available to us to accomplish our God-given assignment in the earth, I believe that's when we maximize our gift. Now, um, it's called leverage, basically, uh, plain and simple. Now, if you are going to travel from Denver to New York, you got a couple options. You can go, uh, actually you can walk from Denver to New York, take you a little longer. You can ride a bicycle, roller skates, you can do that. Or you can hitchhike. <laughs> You can get in a car and ride in a car from Denver to New York, or you can catch a plane, jump on a helicopter, and uh, those are all tools of leverage. The internet, the businesses that we're in, you can leverage your transportation or your means of transportation or transporting to the next level by utilizing the internet. And one of the things that we are uh, big on is discipling people, showing them how uh, to do uh, ministry at the speed of life, <clears throat> understanding how important it is for us to uh, not wait uh, for twice a week to open the church doors or 
uh, wait for somebody to come to your business and knock on the door and say, do you have what I need? But literally being able to make yourself available 24-7. Uh, 24-7, while I'm asleep, while I'm playing, while I'm playing with my grandkids, hugging my wife, or just chilling, studying. Uh, our business is working 24-7 with uh, minimal effort on my part. Uh, set it and leave it alone, and it just happens. And that's where we're at right now. Those of you who have a product, you have an idea, you have a concept that you want to get out, you want to get out to the masses, you are sitting in at the, <laughs> at the cutting edge of opportunity don't miss the opportunity. Opportunity is standing at the door knocking. And if you would open the door to opportunity, you will be amazed at what's out there for you. I personally know and believe, live in, that there's no such thing as lack or scar scarcity. It's not. That's not. That's just, that's just the fears that come up in all of us and some of the propaganda and all the junk that we let go into our, into our mind. But one of the things that we have uh, come to recognize is so important is that to whom much is given, much is required. And because the Lord has blessed us so much, I believe it's our responsibility to make our services uh, and the, thing that we, the things that we offer to masses. We have audience, I've learned we even have audience from Indonesia. I said, like, hey, my brothers, by the way, if you're looking at this, uh, from India, Kenya, um, and I, I don't know why I didn't think of this, but I didn't even know that that's what was going to take place when we started streaming online and getting online, talking to different people, different pockets of people. I have friends in, in Scotland. I got a powerful man of God over in Scotland. Maybe Anthony, you're looking at this and just powerful man of God flowing in fivefold ministry. Uh, then we have Bishop Keith McLeod over in London, England is a powerful man of God to check out his channel. Uh, hello, Bishop. If you see this, uh, Richardson still prays for you and Pastor Winnie and love you very much. But look, the Internet is here to stay. AI is here to stay. And AI needs your intelligence to integrate with its intelligence in order to be effective. AI doesn't exist without human interaction. And so with the interaction of human beings, with the intended purpose of being intentional, aggressive and authentic about what it is that you're doing, you can maximize your journey, okay? Now, if you want to uh, you want to walk from Denver to New York, you're welcome to do that. It's okay, all right? If you want to ride your bike, you can do that. Get on roller skates, hey, choice is yours. I personally don't mind jumping on a jet, traveling from Denver to New York, because it's my preferred mode of transportation. And so I'm just here just to uh, stir up uh, those of you who are looking at 2025 being your year. You're going to hear a lot of people say this, and <laughs> let me put this out. And I'm staying away from this, uh, but I'm going to put it out. You're going to hear a lot of people say, uh, 25 will thrive in 25, because it rhymes. They're gonna, we're going to thrive in 25. Does that sound good? You'd like to say that. But if you don't have a plan, my friend, and if you don't have a means of transportation on how to leverage that journey, you're not going to thrive. You're going to be sitting at um, the end of the year 2025 because you did not execute the opportunity that was knocking at the door. You didn't take advantage of it. And you're going to be stuck like Chuck, just like you were for the last several years, several decades. And all these, um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to be kind. You know, I'm, not, I'm just going to say it like it is. All these false prophecies all these prophetic words is spoken over your life that has produced zero fruit. You need to call it like it is. It ain't working. It ain't, just say it's not working. You know, it's, it's sort of like going to a vending machine. I don't know if you ever went to a vending machine. I'm sure you have. We all experienced this. You walk by the vending machine, it's lit up and it's got the goods inside, but you have to put your money in in order to get it. You put your money in the vending machine, it push the button, and guess what? It doesn't deliver. It doesn't deliver. Your, what you selected is hung up in the little quirly thing or it didn't drop to the bottom. You can't get it. That is, nothing is more frustrating than that. That's the reason why I don't do window shopping. I don't go in stores and I just want to uh, browse through stores. No, I'm a consumer. When I go into something and when I put my money in, when I'm involved in something, I'm expecting results. And God is a result, results-oriented uh, God. And so 
what, I, what I've come to recognize is that many times ministries are like broken vending machines. Yeah, broken vending machines that don't deliver and people are frustrated by going in and out of the church doors and expecting to have change, but uh, people are not teaching the application. That's the reason why I disciple people. I think it's very important for us to disciple people. Years ago, the Lord told me, he says, Richardson, I don't need you to build me a steeple. I want you to build my people. We're in the people building uh, business. I'm a developer. <laughs> I develop people spiritually, mentally, physically, and economically. And so um, that vending machine analogy really sticks with me. And uh, many of you are frustrated because you put your money in and you're expecting the product to be delivered and it doesn't come out the way you want. And then what do you do on that vending machine? You start beating on the glass, you start shaking it, looking so who can give me my money back? And you, <laughs> nobody around to even service it. That's where a lot of ministries are. And ministries who don't wake up and pay attention to what time it is, is that people are not going to continue to put their money in the machine when they're not getting the product. It ain't gonna happen. You gotta pay attention to this. And so I believe um, the Bible says uh, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And the Bible says to buy truth and sell it not. Wisdom, understanding as well. And so when we get to a place where we start saying, okay, now God has come that I may have life and I may have it more abundantly. Um, and he says, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul shall prosper. We know all the scriptures. I've given you power to get wealth. Um, all that... Um, all those things, unfortunately, in, in most Christians' lives, have become more of a cliche. A cliche is something that's said over and over and over, really lost its original meaning. That's a cliche. And that's where we're at in terms of the body of Christ. So I don't want to see you there. Um, I just want to jump on the channel today, um, share some things with you, hopefully to add some value to you. I believe in you. I believe in the God in you. And I believe that, as he said in Jeremiah 29 and 11, he says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. They're not thoughts of evil, but they're thoughts of peace. They're thoughts of good, the shalom of God. The shalom of God means the wholeness of God in every aspect of your life. And then he makes this statement, Jeremiah 29, 11. And he says, and I will give you an expected end. Not bring you to an expected end. But he said, I will give you an expected end. Do you not know that God's gift to you is an expected end so that you can reach the full potential in which he has called you to walk in. I pray to God that that helped you. Hey, let's be about it, LeslieDRichardson.com. Let's not just talk about it, let's be about it. And you don't have to wait for the calendar to turn to 2025 for you to be able to walk in what God has given you. 2025 is the year that you will come alive and begin to walk in the full potential no longer living in your identity, but you'll be living in your identity. And so I got my friend here, look, my, my god dog. Come up here, buddy. Say hello to him. Can you say hello to him? This is Adonis, you all. Say hello to him. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi, Adonis. Say hi. Up. Come on. Put, put, put. Come on. Come on. Get on the camera. There you go. Here he is. Look at the camera, man. Look. 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 Say hello. Say hello to G. Diddy. This is, this is my god dog. This is my goddaughter, Donnie. <laughs> say hello. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out. Get out. <laughs> All right. Hey, that's it. So.